Onk Live Insights is a video editorial program produced by Onk Live. Follicular lymphoma is a B cell lymphoma that depends on the uh, interaction of the malignant B cells with the microenvironment. And many of those interactions were mediated by the B cell receptor signaling and also by the cytokine signaling pathway. Ibrutinib blocks the uh, BTK, the Bruton's tyrosine kinase, which is a critical player in the BCR pathway as well as some of the cytokine pathways. So by blocking the uh, BTK activity, ibrutinib can induce uh, apoptosis in the lymphoma cells and also um, causing the, uh, disrupting the interaction between the follicular lymphoma cells with the microenvironment. In a phase two study looking at ibrutinib at 560 milligrams daily in patients with follicular lymphoma, Dr. Bartlett showed what looked like a very nice overall response rate, but unfortunately it seems that the progression-free survival is not as long as we would hope. And it certainly indicates to us that ibrutinib seems to be much more efficacious in CLL, and really we, we really need to understand more as to why the ibrutinib, ibrutinib's efficacy in follicular lymphoma is different. Ibrutinib is a very exciting first-in-class Bruton tyrosine kinase inhibitor, which has been approved for the treatment of initially chronic lymphocytic leukemia. Uh, it has generated extraordinary enthusiasm because of a very high response rate in patients in the relapse setting, over 80 percent, and particularly because of its efficacy in the really bad actors, those with the 17P deletion, for whom prior progression-free survival curves uh, were dreadful. And now patients are living free of progression for several years with, with this drug. Um, there have been randomized trials in the relapse setting showing its dramatic superiority over chlorambucil, and in the frontline setting uh, with some data, the Resonate 2 trial that will be presented at this year's ASH meeting showing also a very remarkable improvement in uh, progression-free survival compared with chloramicil in the frontline setting. It's also being combined with other drugs. Uh, one of the important studies that's going on now is being conducted by the uh, U.S. cooperative groups, and it's in older patients, and it is bendamustine rituximab versus ibrutinib rituximab versus ibrutinib single agent. The results of this study have the potential to revolutionize how we approach patients with chronic lymphocytic leukemia. It's a very exciting drug. It is well tolerated. There are some problems in some patients with bleeding, uh, the development of atrial fibrillation, uh, some rash and some arthralgias and fatigue. A lot of the side effects of the drug tend to dissipate over time. So it, it's, it's really revolutionized our approach to chronic lymphocytic leukemia. Uh, early on, Steve Treon from the Dana-Farber uh, started testing this drug with good scientific rationale in patients with Waldenstrom's macroglobulinemia. And again, we're seeing responses in over 80% of patients. And as a result, the FDA approved for the first time a drug in Waldenstrom's macroglobulinemia. That being a brutinib was well tolerated. Uh, and again, it has revolutionized our management of this disease. In the past, we used alkylating agents and other drugs which have a number of substantial toxicities, both short-term and long-term, and now we have an oral targeted drug that gets better response rates. Uh, it's, it's been great for patients with this disease. <laughs>